One thing I, I noticed when I was doing sort of the, you know a bit of research for, for the interview is that yeah. in the eighty during eighty four you play, when you were at San Diego Soccer you, you played indoor football. Yeah, we did. It was um, it was the uh, MISL, the Major Indoor Soccer League. Right. And it, it was it basically it, you, the, the the outdoor season was the same as in England, the ten months of the year, but probably. Three or four months into that season, you'd start playing the indoor league, which was uh, seven aside, and um, it was basically in ice hockey arenas with astroturf on top of the ice, and uh, it was it was hard, but it was enjoyable. But I think it, it I played too much football in, in the space of uh, four years in total. I was out there. It was I was playing virtually four years, you know, twelve months of the year all round. Yeah. Which was a bit harsh, which has caused me I need I need two new hips and two new knees now. So. Yeah. Some fantastic quotes whilst I was uh, looking back on your career, and uh, the one that stuck out for me is uh, the game where you face you played against George Best, and you <laughs> gave each other a bit gave each other a bit of a ribbing uh, before then heading out for a night on the uh, on the tire. <laughs> yeah, and, H, uh, yeah, we, we played. Joe, uh, George was playing for uh, San Jose, and it was an indoor yeah. game, and. Um, I think George, uh, mate, uh, before we went further, what an incredible player. He's, he's yeah, the best uh, player I've ever seen in my life. Greatest player of all time, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, absolutely uh, amazing player and such a great guy as well, God rest him. And um, he got to the, we were, we, were, we were having a bit of a bad time at our team playing against San Jose. I think it was getting beat, because it was indoor, I think it was getting beat by 4 or 5 nil, I think. And every time George said to me, said something to the referee, he gave George the free kick. And I said to the referee, you may as well give him the whistle because he's making a better job of it than you are. <laughs> and uh, George heard that. And um, George said, so he, he said something to me about the, the size of my transfer fee. Then I said something to George, which I'm not going to tell you what I said, but it wasn't nice. And um, we, we, we just... We, we, we just said, got on with the game. And after the game, I went around to their dressing room and said, mate, I'm sorry about what I said. I shouldn't have said it. And... Um, and he said, when are you going back to uh, to San Diego? I said, tomorrow. He said, well, come down to my bar for a drink tonight, bring some of the lads down. And it was called Besties in Anaheim. And uh, we took a few of the lads down there and they had a couple of beers with George and it was, it was a great night. It was a great night. Great guy. Fantastic man. Brilliant story. Thank you very much. And when you were playing in the North American Scottish League, was it coming towards the end of its popularity? Um, well, when I got there, um, <laughs> you, you'd run out against uh, Fort Lauderdale strikers who've got Gerd Muller playing, and um, yeah. you've uh, Washington who've got Johan Cruyff playing, and then you go to the Cosmos in New York, and they got Carlos Alberto, Franz Beckenbauer, Rice Bergen, uh, Giorgio Canalia, uh, fantastic players. Then you go to Vancouver, and they've got Rudy Kroll playing, and people like that. It was uh, it was fabulous to. To see these players and, and play against such quality is, is incredible, absolutely incredible. Yeah, and, ma and making the all-star team twice must be. Must, Sorry, must be really proud, mate. Making the all-star team twice. Yeah, it was, really it was great. It, uh, I, it, you know, I, uh, the way things went at Manchester, it, it obviously it wasn't the best situation. I think I went into a uh, an era there that was um, looking to start again and, and bring new players in. And uh, after I'd left the team. That was well established in um, in, in, in uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers, where I played with Kenny Ebert and Willie Carr for about four or five years, uh, and we've got a great understanding. But going to Manchester, um, it uh, it was a new era. Uh, Malcolm had come back for the second time, and uh, I think it was the morning I signed. Uh, I think in the afternoon, they they sold four players, which was Gary Owen, Asa Alford, Peter Barnes, and, and Mick Shannon. And I, 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 I felt it was just time that I, I needed to, to um, probably go abroad and, and play somewhere else. And I did that by going to the, the States. And it was, it was a fantastic time. I really, really enjoyed it. And to make, like you say, make the All-Star team was, uh, yeah, it was a privilege. It was great. When you look at so many, so many good players that were there, mm. 
from all over the world. You know, you've got Brazilians, you've got Mexicans, you've got Argentinians, uh, it, 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 Germans, Germans, you know. It, they were fabulous players from all over the world, and it, it was great to be a part of that. I'll ask you about your time in America, if that's all right. Um, yeah, it's fine. Firstly, um, yeah, how, how did the people of Florida find your accent? <laughs> I know when I went to Orlando, they didn't understand it. I'll, so, be honest with you. I'll be honest with you, in, in America in general, the first thing they say is, are you Australian? Yeah. And then they'll say, you South African. And then it'll be Irish. And I'll say, hold on a minute, what language do you speak? And they'll say, English. I'll say, it's theirs. And so, should not be your first guest, really. You know what I mean? It's what I said. I don't think I've got a strong Scouse accent anymore. You know? And as soon as you say Liverpool, they always say the Beatles, anyway. Yeah, and I think they expect you to sound like Ringo Starr. As long as you don't look like him. How did you move to Miami Fusion come about? Well, uh, when I went back to City, my second spell, I uh, made a prediction at the time that I wouldn't sell, I wouldn't be happy until I'd helped the club get back in the Premier League. And we managed to do that with consecutive uh, promotions. First one being the, the playoff final at Wembley against Stirling and Wembley 2 0 down. 90 minutes on the clock, and we managed to salvage it and win it on penalties. And then we, we went up again the following season. Um, I was 35 in the Premier League. You know, I was getting used sparingly at the time. Uh, I think at that time, Joe was playing a more direct game, more defensive game, trying to solidify, you know, the, the club status in the Premier League. And uh, and he doesn't play football. And the, the opportunity came when Asa Harford came to me, who had played over here, and he said that the guy Ray Hudson wanted to know. He was manager at Miami at the time. Uh, did I want to go over? I did a fancy going playing in the MLS. And I figured at 35, I had two good offers at the time from... Barnsley and Sheffield Wednesday for, uh, to be honest with you for double the money of what I took to come here yeah um, but Ray had promised that if I had one good season at my age then they would give me two more years and double my money to what I should have been in I said well you know I've got no I've just come from the Premier League I've got no worries on proving myself in the MLS uh, we did just that we had the best season in the club's history one of the best seasons in MLS history actually most wins, most goals, uh, most points. Um, unbeknownst to us, uh, they were folding the club at the time. Everybody seemed to know, but but it was when we caught them down, I think it was around about the quarter-final playoffs. And there was nothing we could do about it. We ended up winning the playoffs in the quarters. We came to the semis against San Jose. In six playoff games, we had six red cards. So something was going on. Yeah. You know, uh, our, our motivational talk before the game was they don't want us here. Let's go and prove them wrong. And that's exactly what we did at the time. Um, we lost two dubious decisions in the semi final. I ended up getting red card in my last game, 10 minutes yeah. from the end, when it was nil nil. Uh, we lost in what they call overtime to the golden goal. I looked at the video, and the guy I'm supposed to have fouled, I was about at least a foot away from making any contact with him. So we all knew what was happening. So that was my part in shot, really, in the MLS. I ended up, um, they folded the club as I was about to sign two more years. So I ended up no man's land, really. I got uh, offered to go and play in DC. I think it was LA, San Jose. Uh, I think it was about seven, six or seven clubs that wanted me to go. And I ended up fighting for the players' union instead. I ended up standing up to the MLS, fighting for the players' union. Uh, only put a little small dent in it, but you know, I don't regret any of my actions. Even though I was told after that that I was blackballed, never to be invited back, which is fine also. Um, I went back home and bought a pub. tempted you over to Canada? <laughs> and to be honest with you, I wanted to ch I, I, I've always kept an eye on the MLS and this is somewhere that's kind of close to my uh, heart. I spent a lot of time back and forth in the USA um, and it was an opportunity that I'd been waiting for for the last couple of years to, to try and 
see if I could play in a different type of football, different culture of football, and just get a different experience playing in, 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 in another country. And the opportunity came up with, with um, Jim Brennan, a player that was uh, I knew from Norwich, and I, I thought I'd take it on and, and try my, um, my my luck out there and see how it would go for me. And I, I mean, I must admit, I enjoyed my time there fantastically. I wanted to take it and get back to your time in Toronto. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's, there's rumours going around that um, Jermaine Defoe is going to be joining. Is that it, is a big rumour. I think that'll be uh, official, I think, next week at some point. Um, do you think the standard of the MLS will be good enough for him to get still be considered for an England club for the World Cup? Sorry? Do you think this, the standard of football in the MLS was high enough for him to still get a call-up for the World Cup? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the standard out there is very, very good. Surprisingly, I mean, I knew it was decent, but when I was out there, it obviously surprised me a lot more. What what you find is there's a lot of South Americans. There's a very technical game out there. Hmm. Um, the thing that they, they're probably lacking, and which I would say that's for more of the American players is because they sit in this draft system for I don't know, well, they don't come out of the draft system for 22, 23. It's like the equivalent of having a uh, you know a, a youth player coming into the professional game at 18. And they probably missed that five years of development in playing at that, that competitive level or a higher competitive level which might put them behind, behind the European or South American games tactically. Um, and, and I think that's, that's where the, the discrepancy in the ability and, and, and uh, level is out there. In terms of technical techni- technicality and fitness, they're, they're, they're right up there. So is it it's similar to like the American football, where the, they have like a college league and then they have a that's right. football league on top of it? Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's the draft system. These guys go to college for three, four years and they get drafted out of college to play in the MLS. Oh, and um, yeah, so th- for the American-based players, it's uh, it's not the greatest system, but mm. uh, I guess if you're, you're good enough, for, say a Euro- as a European player or, or a South American player to mm. you, you have massive advantages over similar age players uh, playing in the league or that are going to play in the league. Okay, I don't, how do, how do you find um, Ryan Nielsen? Do you think he's doing a good job in his first season as a manager? Yeah, I mean it's a big learning learning experience for himself, and uh, I feel that he's uh, he's got some very good pr- principles in how to play the game. So it was mm-hmm. great for me to, to see that up close and personal. And um, there's some things that I would take on board and and utilize uh, for the future for myself. So I think uh, he's going to have a have a um, well, he's going to have a fantastic squad come next season. And uh, I'm sure that the whole of Toronto will be expecting uh, a pretty successful season next season, especially if, if Jermaine Defoe joins as well.